Manish, I'm excited to catch up with you here at DTW in Copenhagen. AI, obviously, the standout theme, and operators have a lot of opportunities here. But help me separate hype from reality. It seems like there's some more fundamental issues around cloud and data that need to be addressed before we start to really think about AI at scale. Yeah, Sean, first of all, pleasure to be here, and thank you for, uh, for having me. Uh, absolutely right, uh, in the last two days, you couldn't get out of a conversation without AI and AI agents and Agentic coming up uh, from start to end. So, you know, I mean, uh, we, we definitely see a lot of excitement around that. Uh, that said, I think uh, I'll break this down into both the opportunity and, and, and the challenges. The opportunity is real in terms of there are a number of areas in which the operators can go to really derive business impact, uh, especially productivity gains, operational efficiencies, and more throughout the network life cycle. And I, I can, I'll, I'll probably come back to that. So I think that that's the opportunity. The challenge is, apart from being able to do a POC and, and, and do some interesting works in the, in the lab, how do you break out of these, what I call them as the POC prisons? proof of concept of a proof of concept, but how do you break out of that and, and actually scale? And the fundamental problem that I see lies in the data layer. Because AI at the end of the day starts with data, quality data in, quality outcomes out, uh, but if you, your data is not structured right, is not clean, is not curated, and if your data is living in silos, then that's a challenge, and the telcos, I think, that's the most fundamental and the biggest challenge that they have to go solve for uh, in order to truly unlock the value of that data and unlock the value of AI that they can have then. Uh, throughout the network lifecycle, business operations, network operations, and on customer care side as well. Well, let's explore that a little bit more. I, I think you know, you're know you exactly right about siloed data and the need to eliminate those to uh, achieve some sort of system level change. But at the same time, Operators are under a lot of pressure from the board level, from the C-suite, to go show value from AI. So how do you think that they should approach point solutions that do deliver real tangible value while also working towards this much larger, more complex goal? It's a great question, and I'll probably use uh, our own example at Dell Technologies, Customer Zero, how we went about it. Uh, and when we started thinking about how we can apply AI to our business processes, uh, long story short, we came up with around 800 plus use cases. Now, there is no way we can go and build and deploy 800 plus use cases. And so we went through the journey and we, where we arrived at is, what is it that makes Dell unique? Where are we truly differentiated? Where is our spend? And all of that just brought us down to four key areas. Number one, our product development, our R&D. Number two, our sales and marketing. Number three, our support and services. And number four, our secure supply chain. And we said if we take these four areas and we apply AI, generative AI, then we can have true productivity gains, true business outcomes, true customer outcomes. And so we went about building what we call as next best action for our support and services team. And the impact we saw is improvement in customer issue resolution, customer satisfaction going up, productivity improving. We introduced a chat agent for our sales and marketing team. Great aid to them in preparation for the meeting, understanding the customer, the context before they go into the meetings. Similarly, we introduced a coding assistant for improving software development cycles for our R&D team. And again, applying machine learning to improve our supply chain, right? So that's, that's the template. Going back to your question from an from a operator perspective, what is the biggest asset? Where is the biggest spend? What makes them unique? It's the network. And the customers who are using those networks. I would start there. And that's where I think the real potential is with generative AI to introduce chat agents, deliver much better customer care, understand customer intent, reduce churn, rather proactively address customer needs. That's on one side. 
And then the second big area is the network. And that network life cycle you can think from planning, install commissioning, deployment, optimization, the whole life cycle management of that network, you can start to automate a lot of that work and derive business outcomes. That's how I would approach it. And that's where we see a lot of our customers, operators getting started. And then I want to circle back to Agentic AI. There's a, a ton of Agentic AI conversations happening on the keynote stage, product demos over here in the exhibition hall. And I guess the way that I explain this to myself is AI is a prediction. Generative AI is a prediction and a recommendation. Agentic AI is a prediction, a recommendation, and then a decision or an action. But I, I feel like for operators, they have to develop trust in that process before they can scale it and derive value from it. And I, I think to your, your comment about how Dell did this internally, I mean, it's got to be learning by doing, trusting by using, right? Uh, can't agree more. You can, I mean, there's no point in living in the world of PowerPoint slides and meeting notes and uh, discussions, you actually need to get your hands dirty and to actually start playing with the technology. The potential is immense. And coming to your question around agentic AI, I mean the opportunity is really, for the telcos in particular, a lot of the workflow automation, that you can start to automate that. But you're not going to get there immediately in terms of full autonomous networks, achieving full autonomy. It's a journey you get there. And if I may, I'll just use an example of a Catalyst project that we are doing here, uh, codenamed Pioneer. But at the end of the day, we've taken the network data, real network data from real network. We've created a Dell data lake house, bringing all the data in there, and then applying generative AI and building agent on top of it to actually do fault predict detection first, recommendation of solutions, and then be able to do even fault prediction proactively. Now you can see that's a journey that you get onto. Right now, in the first stage, we actually are doing, I mean, think about it, your network, if it could think, reason, and remediate problems before you even notice, that's a great outcome. Now, do you want to do, do that as a full autonomous solution, step one? Probably not, and that's why one of the things we're showing in the Catalyst is it detects the problem, recommends the solution, give that to a human. And then it's the human in the loop who makes the decision which solution I apply. I think that's step one in that journey. As your solution matures, your data set matures, then you start to arrive at a place where you can then start to think about, can I take the human out of the loop and, and, and achieve full autonomous control? of parts of the function that I want to do. Uh, but again, to me, it's a journey. Yeah, I think this is a really important point. We kind of touched around it on the trust issue and then on human in the loop. But really, any successful technology transformation is going to come in parallel with a change management exercise, yeah. right? Like you can, as an operator, buy all the technology in the world, but if you don't have clarity of vision that is communicated down from the top to the rank and file, it's not going to work, is it? No, it's not. And I think especially for a transformative technology like AI, something that in our life cycles we have seen the internet, we have seen uh, the mobile first revolution, but I think the, the, the potential of what AI brings to the table and the speed at which it's moving, we haven't seen anything like this, for sure. Uh, and, and so the potential is huge, and I think that's why to get this done right, I completely agree with you. This, it requires a systematic approach, top down, to really think through where is your business value, where is your spend, what are the real big problems that you want to go solve for, and get started on that journey pay extra attention to the data layer, get your data layer right, and then you start to build the solutions, the agents on top of it, step by step. Don't go, I wouldn't go, so as I said, 800 plus use case, I wouldn't just go in every direction, rather put the focus and learn through that journey, and then iterate and improve. So for the operators that are in our audience and acknowledging that they're at various degrees of uh, you know, points in the journey towards more autonomous operations, 
you know, what advice would you leave them with? What's the one kind of North Star that they need to keep thinking of as they go through this process? For, for the ones who are already, you know, on the journey, I would just say it's time to get out of the park prison and identify a select set of use cases that you can actually scale. For the ones who have not started, I would urge get started. This is not the one you want to be, you know, sitting by and, and, and watch this because this technology is real, the potential is immense, and it's really important to get started. Excellent. Well, Manish, I really appreciate you taking the time to chat with me, man. Sean, absolutely a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thank you.